Well, welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back in again to check out a brand new toy line that is based off an old school toy line from the 90s, and of course I'm talking about the 30th anniversary of the Street Sharks. Mattel has brought them back, and we are going to be checking out the entirety of Wave 1, kicking it off with Ripster, everyone's favorite shark. He looks awesome, and I gotta say, I gotta give a, a special shout out to Mattel because that packaging is oh so stellar. You got street sharks, you got the trimies, you got the hook, which doubles as the, the hook that will hang in the stores on the shelves. That's pretty cool because the entirety of this packaging is the shark cage. It has 30th anniversary right there, which again, I can't believe it's been 30 years. Street Sharks, the logo, that classic logo. And yes, each of these figures has some sort of feature action. It's pretty cool. And the sides of the boxes are equally as cool. The packaging, if you want to keep it, by all means, this is pretty stellar packaging. It just looks awesome as is. If you don't want to take them out, this is the one time I'm going to tell you you don't have to take it out. But the back side of the packaging, you're going to get some amazing artwork. You're going to get to learn all about these street sharks. It's really well done without being too cluttered. The artwork, they're taking that Masters of the Universe Origins route. Very cool. You get a little bit of a bio if you want to read up on the street sharks. Here's everything that Ripster does, but I'll show you all that in detail. You got a little collector card you can cut out. This is fun. This is really fun, and of course you get to see Jab and Slash, the other two characters, in this first wave. But nothing, nothing beats the Try Me, and that is awesome, because as you Try Me in stores or on your shelf, yes, it looks awesome. He does the chompy thing. And of course, here's the barcode as well. Now, mine came in from Amazon a little bit early. They just kind of showed up. I was like, wow, that was pretty fast. But expect these to hit other stores, Walmart, etc. in the next couple weeks, probably before August. Now, next up, we have Jab. He is the Hammerhead Street Shark. And to be honest with you, as I'll show you coming soon, he's Probably the best one in the wave. I really enjoy Jab. He's got the pull my arm, forehead budding action. Who doesn't love that? And on the back side, it's going to be the usual, just like Ripster had, but a little bit of a differentiation. Obviously, you get to see everything that Jab does. I like the artwork. The old school hand-drawn artwork really makes a difference. And of course, the one, the only try me button, which you can definitely do. See, that's part of the fun of keeping these in the packages too. You can do the same thing as if you're gonna take them out of the packaging. Here's the barcode, like I said, hopefully be seeing these on shelves very shortly. And we got a villain in this first wave in the form of Slash. That's a great way to kick it off with his chilling drilling action. Again, I love the artwork. I love just like, here, this is what this character is going to do the backside is going to be the exact same exact same artwork yada yada you get the idea by now but again just to show it off just to show you the entirety of the packaging i did clip out each of these cards so you can do that if you'd like you got the try me now his is going to be a little bit different because he has an attachment piece but you get the idea chilling drilling here's the barcode you get the idea we got some street sharks to check out so this is gonna be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot jawsome cup of coffee. This is a look at the entire first wave of the 30th anniversary of the brand new Street Sharks toy line by Mattel. And while I got all you Shark Week connoisseurs here, I just wanna say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Why you ask? Well, we got old toys, we got new toys, we got daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. So we will kick off everything with the villain, Slash. And like I said, he's really the only one to come with an accessory, quote unquote, it's his nose that's going to fit onto his face. It's a nice gold, it has some swirls and whirls into it. I don't mind that, it kind of gives off a little bit more texture, a little bit more life. You grab the figure, you simply just insert that right into the hole on the front of his face, and Slash is brought to life. You're not gonna see much from the front, he's more of a side profile character, but when looking at him side profile, the colors really pop. He's got this wild, wicked grin, some teeth, 
He's largely a green and blue character, lots of scales, no peg holes on the bottom of the feet. In fact, the entire line does not have peg holes. I do like peg holes on my action figures in case they don't stand very well. This will be kind of a mixed bag, to be honest with you. Yes, they stand, but you kind of have to fidget with them. But again, the scales, the paint, for where the paint goes, everything is largely crisp, largely clean. The articulation is very modern, very reminiscent, we'll say, of Master Universe Origins. Nothing in the bicep, swivels at the elbow, single jointed, plenty of articulation in those clawed hands. The arms going all the way up. The arms do not pop off, at least on these. I don't think they swip swap parts like Motu Origins, just FYI. He's got the waist, he's got the legs, and largely across the board. The legs are gonna kinda be the most cumbersome parts about these figures, but not for all the figures. We'll say for Slash, he's got single jointed knees, it spins at the knee, but not much in the way of the feet. They don't really do much, if anything, you could kinda say they move up a little bit, but not much. You do have to fidget with the legs, you gotta get the feet, the knees, everything kinda lined up to get these guys standing at least properly. More in a menacing sort of street shark's tone, but the best part is the button on the back, which you simply slide down and you get the drill cone nose a-going. Gives off a very puppet mastery vibe in many ways. <laughs> But that's awesome, although I do wish the nose cone would have fit the three fins that are on his face a little bit better paint-wise. Is it a huge problem? No, but it definitely could have been a little bit more matched. I like the logo that he's got on his shoulders. It's the bonefish, the black on the red. It's a lot of fun. I'm having fun with these toys. These are really cool. Now, to move on to the actual Street Sharks, we'll kick it off with Jab the Hammerhead. And first and foremost, I gotta say, He's a very muscular shark man, right? And, and in, if you look at the abs, which is all kinds of hilarious, but it works. And he's got really rubbery, you will say shark skin, very texturized, very gummy. It's fun. It's kind of a trifecta move for the street sharks, at least. You got the skin, you have the chomping bite, you have some sort of fun punching activating mechanism. That's a lot of fun, and that's why kids loved it in the 90s. Also the fact that, I mean, it's a humanoid shark, which, yeah, that's always cool. The bite, the smile, the teeth, the gums, all painted well. Looks pretty darn cool. The sculpt itself, you got the big old fin on the back, and his camouflage pants, white, black amidst the blue. The white could have been painted just a little bit better, but I like that they match the paint from the arms to the knees. That's a nice touch, I like to see that. That way it just carries over more. It's not too, oh, that doesn't really fit, that sort of deal, as we see oftentimes with different toys, different companies. I won't show you this arm just yet, but the standard arm will go all the way up. Nothing at the bicep, spins at the elbow, single joint, wrist, one open hand, one fisted hand. Just keep that in mind, as opposed to Ripster, which you'll soon see. You got the waist. The legs are interesting on jab, we'll say. He's got drop down hinges, which kind of allows him to kick off more out to the side, which is just kind of cool. But as I was kind of talking about how these could be kind of difficult to stand, jab is the best one overall. He's the most well-rounded and the standing, especially standing upright, really does aid him. So he'll have the single jointed knees, they'll spin, nothing at the boot, at his big old clodhopper boots. They'll simply just spin, but they won't rock, no peg holes, you get the idea. But again, in standing him up, in being well-balanced, having all the features, Yes, he's definitely the highlight because also, yes, you push on his fin and he does the chomping action. And he has a really cool chomping action. You can put your finger in there. Remember, we all did that as kids. It's, it's fun. The teeth are not sharp, just FYI, for those of you buying it for little ones, just in case. But yes, it's fun. And then you have this feature on this arm, which does the jabbing head motion. And I love that, I think that's a really nice touch. You get to see little elements of bone in there, top to bottom. I would have thought that they would have painted that, maybe given a little bit more depth, something like that. You can still move the arm around at your leisure. It's not stuck into one position. It has all the articulation that you would need, but that's the arm that activates the mechanism that gets him 
a jabbing. So again, overall, in terms of the well-rounded street shark, jab is definitely your man, shark. Now, finally, we're getting to Ripster, and I think this is the one that everyone's gonna largely want. It's Ripster, he's the face of street sharks. He's the most in your face. He's the poochie, right, of the street shark world. But again, the pearlescent blue, all the little marks, all the sculpted details of the slashes, the tears, Around his mouth, he's got that real feel, shark skin. That's cool. Again, it really helps to bring these to life and bring them back. This is every bit the fun that we had in the 90s. You got a little soft nose there. Again, the paint looks good. He's got all the abs. Now, he does have open fisted hands, which is good for punching, of course. He doesn't come with any accessories. The SDCC 2024 exclusive does, like a pool cue accessory. So you can find some weapons, if you so choose, to equip him. Down to the pants, the belts, that's all painted nicely. He's got his big old shark cowboy boots going on. He's got some big clodhopper feet, which do aid in standing him. He can be kind of back heavy in a way with the legs. The legs do a decent enough job keeping him aloft, but if you get him turned the wrong way, get the feet too far out, too far in, Yes, he could be kind of wobbly, just as an FYI. And the waist, which you'll soon see activates his little punching mechanism. You have single jointed knees, they spin. The boots don't really do much, much like slash and, of course, jab. But they'll move around, allow you to kind of get him going. You have those drop-down hinges in the legs, which work okay. Again, I think jabs work a little bit better, but... Through and through, we will say, you can get him standing for the most part. Now again, to look at the sculpt, the arms, the backside, the veins, it all stands out. It's very cool. He's a very ripped shark man, but pulling down on his fin, getting the bite mechanism, that's awesome. I would dare I say jawsome, right? Of course, he just looks cool in that sense. But again, a trifecta of toy madness with the chomping, the real feel skin, and then you get him a punching. So if you twist him at the waist, you can launch him and he can just deck Dr. Paranoid or Slash or any of the other characters, which is fun. Vin Diesel would be oh so proud of this figure, I tells you what. But through and through, yes, it's nice to see a return to form for the classicness that is the Mattel Street Sharks. But wait a second, what happened to those shark cages that make up the packaging? Well, it's a large plastic shark case and that's why the packaging works so well with the cardboard and the action figure itself. You have the hook again, which you have all the busted bars in the front like a street shark is pulling them apart. It's several pieces all put together to form that box. But if you move certain elements, you can act like the cage is opening. Again, you can have a street shark busting out between the bars. Technically, as Mattel touted when we first looked at the reveal way back when, you could disassemble these and potentially create a, a shelf of some sort, a display of some sort. I'm not really getting that. Perhaps later down the road when you have a, a few of them in hand, you can do that. But for now, they kind of just look good as standalone pieces. Or if you want to play with them, display them in your collection. A Slash has kidnapped Ripster, and he's barely fit through the bars. But in either case, it's a nice addition to the collection. Now, you're probably wondering, how tall are these suckers? Well, they're going to be around six, six and a half inches, depending on the character. So to go from Jada Toys... Hasbro, NECA toys, depending on how you see the street sharks, they might fit in with your ideal sort of scaling for these characters, but they're very much just big old shark people, and that's okay with me. In terms of, let's say, McFarlane, as they are more of that seven inch scale, much like NECA toys, the larger the characters are, I think that for the most part, yes, they're bigger, but I kind of think of them in Ninja Turtle scale almost sometimes. So again, it will just depend on your preference. But to take these street sharks and to finally team them up with the cartoon TMNT and have everything really just look good, yes, that does look awesome. And to have them be a little bit taller than the turtles, that's definitely how I see the street sharks. So if you have the cartoon TMNT, 
or really any TMNT as long as they're around this scale. I just think that the NECA cartoon TMNT works the best. You'll have a lot of fun with these on your shelf, most definitely. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Mattel 30th anniversary of the Street Sharks Wave 1. And I gotta tell you, I think that they did a great job bringing these back from the packaging to the figures, to having them do all of their chomping and punching and ripping and spinning action. It's a lot of fun. They are gonna be at the higher price points. There's a lot more to these. I would like to see as the line continues, maybe some swap out parts and pieces, perhaps hands, something like that. Maybe some accessories, that would be even better. But again, to have the biker mice from Mars, to have the battle toads, to have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with these street sharks, I think you'll be having a lot of fun on your shelf. So you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything street sharks. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, yes, I've heard you all. I will certainly ask at SCCC what's going on with the extreme dinosaurs. And when I do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.